Hey YouTube, hope you're well. Random one today, mates, kids, hoverboard. Know nothing about them, never used one. Apparently this does not charge up, does not do anything. He's giving me the charger. Now obviously the first thing is power supply. It puts out 43 volts. So as you can see, it is indeed putting out 42 volts. Okay, so I've just opened up the board here. I'll just take one side off, it's pretty easy. And it looks like we have a winner. I wonder which component could be broken. So all I can imagine is we've got two gyro boards here and here. Then underneath those, we've got what amounts to two motors. Now, this wheel has got a bit loose and it's also got pull around it. See, it's, it's loose in there, so that needs tightening up. It's only got three screws in that side and it's supposed to have four, so there's a bit of a clue. There's a wobbly wheel, missing screw, might have been worked on before, don't know, paired before. So I'm just going to take this out and tighten them up. They're tight for now. That wheel's not rocking anymore. That's one problem fixed. Okay, so just trying to figure this uh, thing out. What we've got here is we've got two end stops. See this black U-shape? That's an optical end stop, and it's getting broken. When you lean on the pad, it's breaking that light. One on the front, one on the back. But in addition to that, we've got this uh, gyro here. Now, the reason I know that's a gyro is exactly the same thing you'll get on a quadcopter or a racing drone. And then you've got this little STM32 microprocessor. So what I think's happening here is it's kind of like auto level mode on a drone where it's trying to level itself all the time. But if you, if you tip, tip one of these, it will maintain that pitch and move forward, I think. I think that's what it's doing. So it's got one of these on each side and the main brain of it and the all of the MOSFETs for powering the motors are on this board here and this is probably what's shot. 32 volts on the battery, it's a 36 volt battery and just tracing this through with continuity that goes to this red and black wire, red and black wire. So this is the battery input and this is what's blown and what's blown is right near the battery input. These three wires here are the motor for this side and these three wires here, A, B and C, the yellow, blue and green, these three, are the motor for this side. These are the MOSFETs to drive this motor. These are the MOSFETs to drive this motor. Same as a drone, you've got three wires per motor. I'm going to take this out because this whole thing is heat sinked, sticky heat sinked onto this plate. I think I can figure out what's happened here. And the screw that's supposed to be here, guess where it is? It's there. It's right across this blown component. So that is what's happened. The screw's worked its way. The wheel's come loose. This has come off. The screw's gone underneath and it's shorted out by the look of it. Either that component or something downstream from that component. So this board's going to have to come out. These are not actually connections that can come off. So apart from desoldering all of that, which I'm not going to get into, I've got to pass these cables through here. So I'm just marking them up, so we've got the three motor connections there, A, B and C. Um, so they can come through. This thing has got a clip on it, so that can come through. The battery connector can come through. And this guy here, this green guy here, goes to this guy here. That's the damaged component there, that's a Darlington transistor, 100 volts, because uh, the battery's at 40 volts nearly. And it's an 8 amp, so I haven't got anything, I've had to order one of them. But I'm just going to clean up and test around here. I've got the component off, but that force of that screw bridging that has blown the pad off. So I'm going to clean this up, and then I'm going to have to somehow reinforce this trace. Okay, so new components have arrived, they are MJD127s, so there's the old one blown up. There's a new one. I'm going to have to reinforce the connection onto that track. But you can see I've scratched away the, uh, or taken off the leaded free solder, put on leaded solder and then wicked it off again. What I'm going to do now is just scratch away at that, uh, those vias to expose the trace so that when I put the part on, there's a lot more there for it to contact onto. You can see the top right is more or less right over those vias and uh, we've got enough clearance on everything so that should be good. All cleaned up and ready to go back in the board. It'll be interesting to look in the battery because I don't know if you know the history of these things but they were all recalled from Amazon um, because the batteries used to explode so let's, this is just a case, let's have a look inside here I can see the outline or feel the outline of the 18650 cells but they're going to be exactly the same as that, there's going to be those in series or series parallel 
and I can feel something here so this may well be a little balancing board or some sort of protection I don't know I'm not going to open the battery up there's nothing on there saying Samsung there's nothing on there saying not Samsung I'm not going to warrant anything about that one way or the other okay that was a battery quick look at the charger if this was mine I'd take it apart it's not mine so I'm not going to a couple of things CE mark on the front that's fake a real one would look like that with two circles the C and the E and that's the fake one China export inverted commas um, it's a nice plug but it did have a 13 amp fuse in it uh, that's totally inappropriate I'm quickly running through that it's 42 volts between 1 and 2 amps so it's 42 to 84 watts if it's 80 percent efficient then it needs to take in between 53 and 105 watts and we know it's 240 volts so it needs to take in between a quarter of an amp and half an amp even beefing it up for inrush current it's nowhere near so i've put a 3 amp fuse in it 13 amp fuse totally inappropriate plug looks decent the uh, earth looks okay but the earth doesn't actually go anywhere only two of these pins do anything and the only other thing i'd say with this it's quite easy to misalign this because the, the cutout of the charger doesn't really stop you putting the plug in, so you've got to be careful. I don't know how it detects whether the battery is fully charged or whether the um, battery protection circuitry on the actual motherboard does that. But yeah, not the best charger in the world. Does the job, but not the best. I think it's doing that because it's upside down, but I think it's fixed. The last little thing that was annoying me, this wheel was clicking and I thought, oh, is it the bearings? It's not. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just got a mix of chewing gum and mud in the mud guard there. There's just eight or so screws that take the top section off, so I'll just clear that out. Okay, so it's had half hour charge. Quick power up. It's taking a charge. I'm not going to fully charge it, but you can see that side goes forward, that side goes forward, that side goes back, that side goes back. Um, so that's fixed. Uh, all it was was a screw, oh, the wheel had come loose, the wheel was rocking, that had eventually loosened the screw, a screw in the um, gyro board, that screw had worked its way under the main board, shorted out the main power rail, blown a transistor, um, and in addition this had some chewing gum or something in the wheel which was making it stick and bind. But that's it, if you think you're going to get a demo of me standing on this you've got another thing coming. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.